Hey, a lot of people have been asking me what I think of the Beretta APX. Now that I've had it for a while, what is my final impression of this gun? So I thought I'd take a moment today to go over what I think is good about this gun, what I might think is not so good about this gun, kind of give you a look at the basic features and function of this gun and see if it lived up to the hype that I kind of created for this gun when it was coming out because you know I was anxiously awaiting this gun. So did it live up to my expectations or did it not? Well, let's take a moment here and see. Okay, first off, let's just look at the overall form of the gun. This gun has a very uh, unique look to it. When you first see this gun, it's gonna make an impression. So let's actually talk about that design. I personally, really like the way this gun looks. I mean, it is a little aggressive looking. If you look at these uh, indentations, these textures here on the slide, makes it look really aggressive. And I really like it. It kind of looks like, you know, a Klingon's ass or something here because it's really full of ridges. And like I said, I like it. Some people may not, but I do. Not only because, like I say, it makes it look aggressive, but because Wherever you grab this gun, even with gloves on, you're gonna get a good grip on this slide. It's almost impossible not to find a good place on this slide to grab it where you're gonna have a good purchase on the slide. So I really like that. I even like this little cutback they've done here on the barrel. If you notice, you can see more of the top of the barrel than the bottom because the slide is slightly cut back at the top. And I actually like that design. I like the look of it. I don't know if it gives you any benefit as far as performance, but this gun was definitely designed to look a certain way and I like that feature. Now the grip itself on this gun is really nice. It does have the finger grooves here, but they're really subtle. They're not very aggressive at all. They more just guide your fingers and they do make the gun very comfortable in the hand. This is one of the most comfortable grips I've ever felt. It's more like a PPQ grip, something in that line. It's not quite as comfortable as a PPQ grip, but it's still a very comfortable grip. I also really like the way the magazine sits inside the grip frame here. It sits very far forward. It sits up in nicely. It's nicely recessed in. It doesn't pinch your fingers. It's just a very comfortable design. And I like the way it looks also. Now all the controls of the gun are very easy to use. They're very simple. You know, your takedown lever, your slide lock release, your magazine release, everything on it's very simple, very straightforward, very easy to use, not a confusing gun at all. Now the sights are very basic. There are three dot white sights that came on this one here. I think that's what's stock on the gun. They're simple, but they're decent. They're metal, so they're good quality sights. And you can get night sights for it, but I'd prefer if this gun came with night sights, uh, but I'm sure that would affect the price. So for what you're paying for this gun, those sights aren't so bad. They're definitely better than Glock sights. Now, one of the main features of this gun regarding the grip frame here is that this grip frame is interchangeable. As you can see this little window here where you see the serial number, it's the firing control unit inside that is the actual gun. So you can change these grips easily. This started off as an all black gun. I bought the gray grips for it. And not only can you change out the grips, but each grip comes with a different set of back straps here that once they're in, they look like a part of the grip. They don't look like something that's just been slapped on there like they do on the Glocks and some other guns. They actually look like part of the grip. They fit very well. So the grip on this gun, the design with the modular chassis, everything really done very well, very happy with it. There is only one negative thing I'll say about the actual modular design of this gun is it's not as easy to change as the SIG. Now it's actually almost as easy to change once you look at how to do it. But as far as it being as intuitive, it's just not as intuitive as the SIG design. If you watch the video I did when I first got the gun where I tried to take it apart without reading any instructions, it wasn't quite that easy. I had to look one or two things up by the end of the video to see how to take it apart. Now, that's not saying it's hard to take apart, which a lot of people thought I was saying. It's not intuitive on how you take it apart was the point I was making. The SIG, you can have no idea how it works and take it apart very easily. This, you have to have kind of an idea of how you gotta take it out of there before you can do it easily. It's like I say, it is easy to do, but it's not quite as intuitive as some other designs, but it's not like you're gonna be changing that quickly in the field or anything. So I don't think that's really a big issue. It was just something I was curious about. Now, another thing I really like about this gun over the other modular guns like the SIG is how they did the back end here. This back end is much cleaner looking. You don't see the rails here. If you pay attention to the SIG one, you see the rails. As you see here with this SIG, see how you can see the metal rails 
right there. See the metal rails on the back of the slide and it also makes some places on the frame that just don't seem too strong because there's little pieces of plastic on either side of that metal rail. I don't really care for that design, but it functions well and the grip frames are cheap. So if you did ever damage it, taking it apart, you can get another one really cheap. But I just think there's a better way they could have done this. This is a holdover from how they just modified a 250 to be the 320. I wish they would have redesigned the whole gun a little bit more. Now let's talk about my actual favorite feature of this gun, the trigger. The trigger itself on this gun is awesome. And I don't just mean performance wise. Yes, it works very well at the range. It's much better than a Glock trigger. It has a good take up, a good solid break, a good reset. There's everything about it is good. For a polymer trigger, I'd actually say it's great. For a striker fired trigger, I'd actually say it's great. But it is plastic, like I said, it's polymer. So it's not a metal trigger, but it's still a very nice trigger. It's much less like the cheap two-piece triggers of the Smith & Wesson or the two-piece trigger of the Glock. It's much more like an aftermarket trigger you would put in one of those guns, both in the way it looks and in the way it functions. So I have to say, as far as factory included triggers go on these polymer guns, this is one of the best I've ever tried, and I actually like it quite a bit. Now, as far as accuracy of this gun, performance at the range, how it handles recoil, etc., it scores very well in all those categories, but you know, I can't really teach you too much about that in a video. Uh, you can watch me shoot all day long, you're not gonna learn anything, but I'm gonna say it was reliable, it was accurate, it was easy to shoot, and it handled recoil pretty well. I mean, it's a, just a nine millimeter gun, so it shouldn't recoil too much, but even shooting some really hot nine millimeters through it, it wasn't that difficult to handle. So I was happy with it, but I will have to say, I'm not as happy with a couple of things on this gun. And let's talk about those now. One of the things I don't like is how far my hand goes under the slide here. Now, I know a lot of people think, well, borax is borax. It's all about borax. And the lower the borax is, the better it handles recoil. I don't always find that to be true because with my hand so far forward on this one, even though it's up high near the bore axis, it's actually in front of a lot of the weight of the slide. So when the slide cycles back, a lot of that energy is behind my hand, not in front of it. So I find it causes the gun to flip a little more on me. Now, that might not be the case with you. I don't know how your hands are shaped, but I actually like it better when my hand is closer to the back of the frame. Like if you look on the SIG, my hand is behind the slide. There's very little difference in bore axis on these two guns. A lot of people think there's a big difference. There really isn't. They overemphasize that, a lot of people do. But my hand is back here behind where all the motion is going to start from. As you can see on this gun, the actual meat of my hand, the majority of my hand is under where all that action is taking place. And I don't find that as comfortable as I do with my hand further back. So that is a small issue I have with this gun. All right, now we're to the portion of the video where I'm gonna be a little petty here. Here's one thing I don't like. See how you can see through the slide right there? You can actually see through to the other side. I don't like that, both aesthetically and for another reason, and I'll show you why here. If you look at the SIG, you don't have that. You see that little raised piece right there on the inside of the frame? They put that on both sides. You can see it right there. And there's two reasons why I like that better. One, it looks better. And two is for reliability reasons. Now I know a lot of people go, well, that don't matter, it's just for looks. Well, it does matter to me because when this gun isn't in use, that big opening right there just creates more of a chance of dirt, debris, lint, whatever, of getting in there and somehow making the gun slightly less reliable. I don't need any chances of a gun being less reliable. So just by adding that little lip there, I think that reduces the likelihood of anything getting into the inner workings of the gun. There's still other places it could get in. I'm not saying the gun is impervious without that, but with that big gap there, it's just one more point of entry for something that might make this gun not function when I need it to. So you might be saying to yourself now, well, this is a great polymer gun. And you know what? You'd be right. I think this is a great polymer gun. In most ways, it's every bit as good as a SIG P320. And in some ways, I think it might even be a little better, as I said earlier in this video. But there's one thing about this gun that just kills it for me. There's one, as I would call it, fatal flaw. And there it is right there, pop it into view. It's the way Beretta does their firing pin safeties. The way this piece right here pops up from the slide, it actually protrudes into the space above the slide. That is a big killer for me on this gun, simply because 
it negates the ability to easily put a red dot on this gun. And red dots are becoming very popular, especially with old guys like myself that have failing eyes. Red dots are affordable, they're so accurate, they're so easy to use, that anytime a pistol can't use one easily, then I'm just not interested in it. So this gun, fails in that category. Glocks have them that you can use red dots on them easily. Uh, FN, SIG of course, you know, all the other manufacturers are on board with the red dot thing right now it seems, but the Beretta just isn't. And to me, that is a deal killer. So in the end, even though this gun performs well, looks good, and is an overall great gun, that one little thing that makes me unable to put a red dot sight on it means that there's only one thing I can do to this gun to make myself happy, and that is sell it. Just get rid of it and get something else. Because there's too many guns out there right now that have the things I want to put up with a gun that doesn't have the things I want, no matter how good of a gun it might be otherwise.